Hey guys, what's going on? Gazzy Mexican here, and this is Message Monday for 4-15-2013, and that is actually tax day. Today is the day that your taxes are due, so hopefully none of you watching right now that are taxpayers are like, oh shit, I did not know that, and now you're in a big load of, pr of problems and trouble. Hopefully that's not you. Taxes suck though. We're not going to talk about taxes. Let's, let's keep it stress-free on this Message Monday. As you can already tell, this is an all-cam. I, I, I mentioned before when I did this last that it doesn't feel right to call it face cam because, I mean, face cam's like implied when you're playing a game and you have the face cam like up in the corner. This is all camera. It's all the face. It's just the, the camera. There's no gameplay here. So this is Message Monday, another all cam edition. Uh, why? Because I felt like it. So without further ado, let's get into this week's questions. First question for this week comes from AJ Jenks from Twitter and they say, After starting commentating, and even now, do you find you talk to yourself more when gaming and in general? It's a good question, and um, I guess so, maybe? Um, it's kind of hard to tell because when I first got into commentating, the reason why I decided YouTube commentary and gameplay and stuff like that would work well with me is because I've always kind of talked to myself when I game. Um, I, when I grew up, I was playing games a lot with my brother, and we'd kind of talk to each other. So when he wasn't there, I just kind of naturally had that instinct to, you know, talk about what's happening in the game or just like react verbally. I've always been somebody that talks to myself. like. I don't find that weird. I don't think that's a weird thing to do. I think it's healthy to talk to yourself. I think there are unhealthy ways of talking to yourself. Like if you're sitting there in the corner like, <laughs> I need to clip my nails. Like, you know what I mean? Or something weird. That's a bad example. I don't, I don't know where that came from. But <laughs> if you're like creepily talking to yourself and you truly like schizophrenia or whatever, and, and you have like multiple or like bipolar, you know what I mean? You have like different personalities and uh, I don't know. I think that's the kind of unhealthy sort of talking to yourself. But just talking to yourself normally like, oh man, I should pick up the mail today. Or like, oh god, that sucks. Why would they do that? Why would they trade this, blah, 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 you know, talking sports or whatever. I think that's the sort of healthy talking to, uh, you know, talking to yourself. I, I don't think talking to yourself is weird. Do you, Max? No, I don't. Why don't you? I'm just kidding. We're not doing that. Um, next question for this week's message one day is from Brendan Cody. And they say, did you watch Dragon Ball Z as a kid? If so, who was your favorite character, and what are your opinions on Dragon Ball GT? Yes, I did watch Dragon Ball Z as a kid. That was one of the few animes that I ever watched. I know a lot of people don't like to consider it an anime. It is technically an anime, but since it, I don't know, it's kind of got its own identity and um, become its own thing or whatever, that a lot of people don't consider it like an actual anime or whatever. At least this is what I've heard. I'm not, I don't have any examples for you. But um, yes, I did watch Dragon Ball Z as a kid. I love Dragon Ball Z. I still think, I think it's funny as a child, um, not really getting what they were doing way back when. Like, you just get frustrated because they would, obviously, for people that watch Dragon Ball Z, they would stretch out the episodes a whole bunch and, like, took Frieza, like, fucking forever to blow up Namek or, you know, for, the, for Namek to get exploded. But I think it was funny as a kid not realizing that they were stretching it out. The reason I figured out as an adult that they did that is because Dragon Ball Z was based on a comic or an uh, anime, like a manga or something like that in, um, I think it was comics or whatever, whatever you want to call it. It was based on, you know, written form uh, from some guy in uh, Japan and they had to stretch out the episodes when, like with Fluff, when they didn't have, you know, they were caught up and they didn't have like original stories coming at them from the, the comics and stuff. I believe this is what, what I heard. I'm pretty sure it's correct, um, but you know, I'm not going to say it's 100% correct, but that's what supposedly is the reason why um, the Dragon Ball Z episodes were so stretched out and long, but I, I really did like uh, Dragon Ball Z as a kid. It was a lot of yelling, and as a, an adult, and as you grow up, you realize they kind of sound like they're constipated all the time, just going like, <laughs> you know what I mean, when they're powering up, but I don't know, as a kid it's entertaining, you're flying around, there's like energy blasts and stuff, what kid wouldn't like that, so. Uh, who was your favorite character, and what are your opinions on Dragon Ball GT? Uh, favorite character? I don't know. I really don't know. I, I liked Gohan a lot because, I mean, I could identify with him. He was like this kid who kicked ass. But um, I also really like Vegeta. Everybody likes Goku because he's the main character and he's, you know, the hero and stuff. But I don't know. I'd probably go with Gohan or Vegeta. Vegeta's the most badass character. And then he had that uh, M on his... Or is that Dragon Ball Z? I can't... Or Dragon Ball GT. I can't remember. When does Majin Buu come into play? 
I don't remember. I have zero memory on how that timeline works. Like, if you were to talk about an episode, I'd be like, yes, I've seen that. But I don't remember what was Dragon Ball Z and what was Dragon Ball GT. I didn't watch very much Dragon Ball GT. Um, so I don't really have too much to say on that, because I didn't watch it too much. By then, I was kind of it was kind of played out, and I was like, you know what? I think I'm kind of done watching this, and I was tired of storylines being fluffed out and stuff like that. But that's my thoughts on Dragon Ball Z. Yes, I did watch it. Favorite characters, probably Vegeta. Gohan when I was a kid, but now probably Vegeta. Um, and I didn't watch that much Dragon Ball GT. But thank you for your question. Let's move on to the next one. Next question comes in from Graves underscore HD, and they say, what's your favorite part of a video game? Story, gameplay, power-ups, etc." Good question. Um, I don't know that, uh, I don't know, there's, a, there's some other stuff you didn't mention there, because soundtrack's really, really important to me. I'd say story and soundtrack are probably some of the biggest things. I'm gonna say story is my number one thing with a, with a game. That's part of the reason why I love the Mass Effect series so much is because the story is so like enthralling. I can lose myself in that universe and it's really, really fleshed out. I love that kind of thing. And that's the reason why I love Skyrim because it's such, Bethesda, again, they're one of them game developers that are very, very good at creating a world that you can believe and just lose yourself in. So story is probably my number one thing that I like to see in a game. Soundtrack, probably number two. Um, game mechanics and stuff like that, yes, that's very important, um, but you know, graphics, not so much important. There's plenty of good games that are out that that or that have come out, especially with the rise of indie developers lately. Um, that's that's a testament to that graphics aren't super, super crazy important for a really good game. But um, yeah, I'd say story is probably my most important thing in a game. But thank you for your question, and let's move on to the next one. The second to final question for this week's Message Monday comes from Kenji underscore Nick, and they said, Are Malcolm and Zoe getting along great, or is there trouble? For those of you guys that don't know, um, myself and Renee recently got a cat, and we named her Zoe. She's a munchkin cat, and I believe her coloring is like a calico? Calico? I can't remember how it's pronounced, but I can remember the spelling. Anyways, that's her coloring. Um, the reason why we got her is because we've been wanting to get a cat for a while, specifically Renee as well. She's always been a very big cat person, and I've never been against cats. I kind of grew up with some kind of asshole cats, but um, more so recently, uh, in the last few years, I've met a lot more cooler cats, so my opinion of cats have kind of changed. Also, I used to have a little bit of a slight allergy to cats. It went away. I don't have uh, an allergy anymore, but getting sidetracked. We have a cat named Zoe now. If you guys haven't seen her, I, I will be making uh, a video introducing her to you guys and stuff, of course. Uh, I just haven't had my camera around. Um, or charge really, actually. This is the first time I've charged my battery in a while. So I'll have my camera out and I'll film her and stuff like that. Uh, and I'll introduce her to you guys properly. But we have a cat now. Um, she's a munchkin cat, which means she has shorter little front arms. Her back legs are the same. They're basically like the corgis of the cat world. I don't know. It looks really silly when she like jumps up and down on stuff and like runs or walks or whatever. She's a really cool cat. Um, we got her from her from Renee's previous coworker. I guess they're going to be moving, and uh, his uh, fiance was developing an allergy to the cat. So, unfortunately, that was the case for them. But good news for us because we finally were able to to adopt her and um, you know take her in. And now she's our cat. And she's very, very cool, and I will share her with you guys in the future. But is, are there any problems with her and Zoe? Or, or with her and Malcolm? They've actually done really good together. Um, it's it's what you'd imagine. I mean, she she has a general, you know, distaste, whatever, for him or whatever, or apprehension to be around him because she's a cat and Malcolm's a big husky who's, you know, a puppy still. He's just under a year old, so he's still, you know, he walks up and says hi and sniffs. So it's, it's gone back and forth in that whole, like, Malcolm will come up and sniff and stuff. He's not mean or anything like that, but, you know, the cat feels a little threatened and, and uncomfortable, so she's hissed and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But she hasn't run away. She hasn't, like, scurried off under the bed or anything like that. She's held her ground, and she's... They're just, they just gotta work, uh, work it out amongst each other and, um, you know, get used to being around each other. I, they've done a lot better than I thought they were gonna do. And Malcolm's getting it, too. He's getting that he can't just always be up in her face. Every now and then he'll kind of... It's really funny. I'll try to get some video of that too, because he'll like he'll go up and like be like, hey, hey, what's up? Hey, hey, and then she'll you know she'll like make like a like what kind of motion like she's about to swat his face, and he's like, oh, oh, oh. like he backs the ball, freaked out and stuff. But uh, so he, Malcolm's been kind of confused. He doesn't really know why she doesn't want to you know say hi to him and stuff. That's kind of an, uh, an unknown concept to him. So it's funny he'll like stand across the room and like look at her and be like. <laughs> like he makes all these silly kind of howls and like I don't know just just showing that he's frustrated kind of deal 
But they're doing good. Um, it's just a thing that'll be sorted out within time. And uh, I'll show you guys Zoe in upcoming videos soon. So thank you for your question. Let's move on to the last one for this week's Message Monday. Last question for this week's Message Monday comes in from Mr. Fallout 95 and they say, is there any advice you would give to someone who is nervous around girls to get into a relationship? Um, I suppose I could give some advice. I'm not like, I'm not a, I'm not a, a relationship expert by any means, but I'll give you advice that I've kind of, I guess, learned uh, over experience, you know, I don't have a, a huge history of like dating a whole bunch of people or anything like that, but I'll give you advice um, on how I, because I used to be, believe it or not, I used to be, you know, um, I think everyone kind of goes, every guy goes through a phase where they're, where they're intimidated by girls at some point. It's weird, because like when you're a kid, it doesn't matter, you'll talk to anybody, but there's a shift. I don't know exactly when it happens, probably around puberty or whatever, but um, where, you know, things become awkward, girls start getting boobs, and you're like, what? what's that? And you become attracted to them, and you're like, well, uh, I don't know, hormones and shit like that happen. And then things become awkward. Um, the best way to become comfortable around girls, I guess, like I said, I was I was uncomfortable around girls and stuff, even in high school, like early fr freshman year in high school um, is kind of more, is weird. My high school years went freshman, kind of, you know, kind of kept to myself private, stressed about, you know, schoolwork and stuff like that. So, you know, girls and stuff like that wasn't really anything, um, wasn't anything I was focusing on as far as like trying to get better at talking to them or anything like that. I was just kind of focused on my schoolwork and whatever. So interactions that I had with girls, not that I was like, I didn't talk to anybody, but I was awkward around girls. Everyone's awkward around girls at, at some point in their life, I would think, or every guy anyways. Um, but the best advice, and I'm sure you've heard it before, is to be yourself. It's you take you take all of your fucks and you shove them out the window. You, you basically the worst thing that's gonna happen is what they're gonna say no or something like that. If you if this is under the the pretext that you have a girl that you're interested in and you want to talk to her and potentially you know try to try to date her, um, the best thing, especially if this is somebody that you know or whatever, or like you're friends with somebody for a while and you have feelings for them and you think they might have feelings for you or whatever. The best thing to do is just to let them know how you feel. You don't have to be awkward about it. Just be like, hey, you know, we've been friends for a while. I really enjoy our time and stuff like that. I like hanging out with you. You're cool, blah, blah, blah. And just be forward with them. Um, I, from what I've gathered, uh, girls are a lot more receptive and respectful to a guy that just, you know, doesn't play a bunch of games and is is straightforward. I've never, <clears throat> I've never played games with anybody. I've never really been that interested in a whole lot of people because a lot of girls out there, they just... They weren't my type. They were, you know, a lot. A, lot, a big thing too is, is smoking for me was never uh, that that uh, attractive and still isn't. And I'm just, that's why I'm with Renee because she doesn't smoke. Um, not that I'm bad mouthing people out there that smoke, but for somebody that doesn't smoke, that's very unattractive. Um, but I'm kind of getting sidetracked for so basically condense down, take all your fucks, give them, throw them out the window. The worst thing that's gonna happen is they'll say no. Or, you know, things, it, who cares about that person? You know what I mean? They, they think you're weird? Okay, fuck that person. Just go on to the next, go keep on keeping on is basically what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm saying this horribly and I'm sorry if this isn't helping at all, but the best way is to just be comfortable around a girl. Be, uh, and that's easier said than done, I know. And it just, it's one of those things that kind of comes with experience and, and time put in being around a girl and stuff like that. So that's why, I, that's why a lot of, of guys that are really comfortable around girls, um, a lot of them that I've known grew up around girls, so they know how to talk to them, you know, they know more so what's going on in their head, because who the fuck knows what's going on up there. I mean, girls are kind of kind of crazy sometimes. Every girl has a little bit of crazy in them, so do guys, but girls on a different level, different kind of crazy, I guess I could say. I'm not trying to offend anyone out there. But uh, best way to do it is to just do whatever you can to be comfortable around them. Um, you might clam up, you know, on the first couple times, but with experience, You'll get better um, and be less nervous when you're around a girl. So that's my advice. Hopefully it helped. It was kind of all over the place. And then I talked about myself for a little while. I don't know. I, I'm not somebody that claims to give great advice or anything like that. These are more just questions. You guys ask me questions because presumably you want to hear my take on something. So I'm not some relationship advice guru. I'm not trying to be. But thanks for your question, Mr. Fallout95. And that is going to do it for this week's Message Monday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to have uh, potentially your question answered in the next Message Monday, the uh, way you can do it is just follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash gassymexican, and every Monday around midday or so in the afternoon, I will tweet out uh, that I'm looking for questions, and then I'll go through and pick my questions. So, 
Wait for that tweet on Monday after you follow me on Twitter, and that is how you do it. If you don't get your question answered the first time uh, around or the second time even, keep asking. And if it doesn't keep getting answered, you know, week after week, maybe try a different question. Maybe it's just something I don't want to answer or it's something that I've answered already. So that's it, guys. Thanks for all your questions. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an amazing week. And that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.